Hi, I'm Tanya Duarte from the Institute for Molecular Bioscience at the University of Queensland. The hypothesis of my project is to use next generation sequencing to monitor genomic changes in the microbiome of CF patients airways over time and its applicability as a method to advise patients treatment. Cystic fibrosis is the most common lethal autosomal recessive inherited disorder. It affects predominantly the Caucasian population with a prevalence of about 1 in 2,500 births. The expectancy of life is only 36 years in Australia and up to 50 years old in other countries of the world. My project focuses on the lung disease because it is the disease that presents the highest rate of morbidity and mortality in CF. This figure represents a normal airways, and here an airways of a CF patient filled with mucus. This mucus cannot be cleared out due to the impaired cilia that cannot do their job, and this causes chronic microbial airways infection. The microbial infection triggers an intense inflammatory response from white blood cells, including neutrophils, which instead of helping to eliminate the microbes, they release uh, active, oxy uh, active oxygen species and other inflammatory mediators, causing epithelial cell detachment of the bronchi and irreversible lung damage. In order to study the microbial airways in CF patients, I did a longitudinal study where I have collected sputus samples from six CF adults with chronic lung infection. The majority of the samples was collected during antibiotic treatment, and one last sample was collected after the end of the treatment. The samples are collected at the Prince Charles Hospital in, here in Queensland. Quickly, this figure shows the workflow I follow after sample collection. I did DNA extraction with a host DNA depletion step, saved sputum for, for validation, and generated sequencing data with both long and short uh, platforms. After I got the sequencing results for uh, ONT sequencing data, I based called the raw data using Guppy 3.3. Then I demultiplexed and trimmed the FASTQ FAS files using QCAT uh, because I used the rapid PCR barcoding kits and sequenced a pool of 12 uh, samples per flow cell. At this stage, 16S reads were classified with Kraken2 software using Kraken2 database, as well as the 16S data uh, from Illumina. For whole genome sequencing data, I used Minimap2 to, to align the reads with the human genome for ONT and BWA for Illumina data, and then used SAM tools and BAD tools to recover only microbial reads in uh, FASTQ files. Those microbial reads were then run in Kraken2 to, to access the taxonomic classification. Here is a taxonomic classification represented in bar graphs Per, uh, per time point of sample collection per patient and sequencing type used. I've got here on the right a le mini legend of the most abundant pathogens. In gray is Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which can be seen in the first time point of the collection for patients one, three, and six in all platforms and sequencing types, and for patient four in all except 16S Illumina. Since it doesn't sequence the whole gene, um, it can potentially cause misleading results. Patient 2 had an infection with Staphylococcus aureus in purple and Stenotrophomonas maltophilia in orange. In relation to patient 5, by culture it showed infection with Pseudomonas aeruginosa, but by sequencing it showed an infection with Prevotella species, mainly Prevotella intermedia in pink. This is probably due to the unspecificity of the culture methods, which was meant to be growing aerobic microbes, such as Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and not an aerobic uh, microbe, such as, which is the case of Prevotella species. Most of the other colors in the graphs uh, represent oral related microbes. From a clinical point of view, if we compare the first and last time point of collection per patient, we see the same pathogen identified in both time points, meaning these patients were uh, at a reinfection with the same pathogen. For Staphylococcus aureus found in patient two, I could also get a strain typing and antimicrobial resistance profile from these reads. 
method for this, I used Sketchy, developed by Ike. Sketchy is an online lineage calling and genotyper tool for bacterial pathogens that operates on uncorrected nanopore reads, and it's based on geno genomic neighbor typing by Carol, Brenda, and colleagues, so it's perfect to use in real-time sequencing. The genotyping was done for all three time points of patient two, and these are the sketchy results. Only up to a thousand reads were analyzed by sketch. Here we've got all the genomic features, the MLST, which gives the strain of the species, in this case, strain eight. The MACA is a gene, and based on its absence or presence, the strain can be MSSA or MRSA. PVL, which is a viral end factor, and it's not present in this case. And then a list of antibiotics, which uh, with a prediction of sensitive in this case. Here is another representation of the results. Uh, the x-axis shows the number of reads, and the y-axis is the sum of shared hashes, uh, what makes the prediction in the graph on the left, and the preference score in the graph on the right. In the samples D1, uh, day 1 and day 47, the prediction was already stable with just a couple of reads, and not all 1,000 were ne needed. For day 12, there were only 57 read sequenced, but these were definitely enough to infer strain 8, also with lower confidence. In summary, we could confidently predict the genotype uh, for all three time points, and this was confirmed by hybrid assembly, which leads me to the next set of results. Different tools were used to generate draft genomes of the most abundant species. Then I used Metabat 2 for binning the context, CheckM for quality control, and the most complete and the less contaminated beans were classified by Kraken 2 and other tools such as MEMR, MLSD, and RESFinder. Here is a summary of all hybrid assemblies per sample per patient that I could obtain. The bars in dark blue show the completeness of the draft genome. In red is the contamination and light blue is the missing bits of the genome. The assemblies were classified with Kraken2, uh, with Kraken2 database and validated by PubMLST. These red rectangles are the species that were assigned differently by both tools. Between these are Provotella species marked with a star, and which for some of these Kraken2 database classified as uh, Provotella intermediate, while PubMLSD classified as Provotella esticula. This happened because Provotella esticula was missing from the Kraken2 database. In terms of strain, see a, a, a Pieraginosa strain 201 was detected in all time points of patients 1, 3, 4, and 6, except for the day 0 for this patient 6. SRU strain 8 and S maltophilia strain 233 was detected in patient two across multiple time points. This confirms the previous sketchy results. Moreover, uh, strain eight of Asorius was also classified for the first time point in a fungal run done with DNA without human DNA depletion with the aim to evaluate the power of fungal and sketchy in a quick sequencing run. In summary, in this study, there were six patients with recurrent lung infections due to the inefficiency of the antibiotic treatment. The taxonomic classification of Illumina 16S can lead to unreliable results. Trapped genomes are possible to reconstruct from metagenomic samples in human DNA uh, if, prior, if uh, it's removed DNA prior to uh, the microbial DNA extraction. There isn't a perfect assembly tool and database for classification. Uh, ONT devices lead to spe species identification in an ensemble much quicker than other methods. And Sketchy, Sketchy is in the horizon of a tool for real-time ONT runs due to its fast and sensitive lineage calling, genotype, and resistance profile. I just want to thank everyone who helped me in this project to achieve these results. Thank you.